Hey everybody, Brian here, and I wanted to start off today to address a few things that I've been hearing over the week. Now we're now a, a full week into online learning with the district. And the, the most constant concern I'm hearing from teachers is how do I set boundaries? Where do I put boundaries in my day so that I can focus on my own kids at home who are doing their own e-learning so that I can respond to students who are writing me at 11, midnight, one, two in the morning where do those boundaries come in? Because you all want to be responsive and you want to be there for those kids, which is um, amazing. It's where we need to be for our students during this really, really weird time. The problem is that setting boundaries is very, very different in an online space than it is in school. So in this video, I wanted to give just a few thoughts, a couple tips, things that I do to help separate my work day online from my home day. There are two different schedules competing here. We've got the, the teacher schedule, which is functioning within a normal workday mindset for many of us still. And the student schedule, which is, I'm gonna get this done when I can get this done. Many of our students work or they take care of kids, which means that they don't start their schoolwork until eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night. And that's why emails come in so late. But us, we've, we're up in the mornings. It's, it's dark out still. We're up in the mornings and my kids have got things to do during the day that I also have to address. And so where do we find that balance? Now, this is where technology can really help. The internet allows us to offload things and create stop gaps for those times when we cannot reply immediately. So let's let's think for a minute. We're moving from a from a point where we had day to day to day interaction, but now I want to challenge you to start thinking on the week long scale. And I'm not saying that week to week as discrete things is any better than day to day as a discrete thing. But if we're thinking on the scale of weeks, these deadlines that we create deadlines are artificial these deadlines that we create become a little bit more fluid and we can allow the, the engagement process to just flow a little bit more naturally and we can get away from oh this is due tomorrow so i have to do it right now you need to be bookending your weeks so on mondays if i'm giving some kind of introductory thing i need to finish up by teaching or addressing or replying to issues with that introductory thing. Now, these could be videos, they could be readings, it could be uh, discussions, it could be whatever you want it to be. If I'm introducing at the beginning of the week, in the midweek, I have to have some kind of check. I have to have some kind of check-in for my students to show me what they know so that I can respond to that appropriately by the end of the week. Now, this can happen, again, in a lot of different ways. Looking at students' responses, I have to be able to see what they know and what they can do so I can reply to that. This is where getting proficient, you don't have to be a master, getting proficient at making a short instructional video is a great skill to have. Because if I see a misconception here for a large body of students, I could answer those individually in emails, or I could wait for them to call in in a Google Meet, or I could record a two minute video that addresses that issue and boom. Now that group of students has it, and my entire class has access to that thing as part of a library of material that they can refer back to. I now have created two layers of protection for my time when I'm working to stay sane <laughs> for myself. You need to be given clear and consistent expectations. And that means if your office hours are from 10 to one o'clock during the day, you have to be available from 10 to one. And this means using a calendar or publishing an announcement in Canvas or putting a page in Canvas with just this information so it's the first thing they see when they log into your class. It means communicating with parents about when you're available. And so when an email comes in at 11 o'clock, if you're not working at that time, it's okay not to reply at that time. On that page, let's say, you've got your office hours and when they can get live help and you're answering emails immediately. Outside those times, you can triage your responses. Which ones need immediate, immediate help? Which ones can be pushed off for a little bit to make something a little bit better? Which ones can I put off till the next day even? Making sure your students know what to expect at any given time means that you don't have to always be replying at any given time. Another thing that I do, and I started this habit a long time ago, is I don't get email notifications on my phone, but at the end of the day, I turn on do not disturb. And that way my attention is not constantly going back to my phone if it buzzes. If I have those stop gaps in place and I make it very clear to my students where they are and how to get to them, then they have a support system that is prepared for them and they can access when they're ready for it 
and then I can adjust when we get back to work the next day. And so I'm, I'm saying this all because this is a big need that I'm seeing and I want to validate the work you are doing. The work I see day to day is amazing. The, the learning curve is astronomical. It, we went from a, a nice slope to straight up. Uh, the work you're doing is great. I hope you're feeling encouraged. A lot of people have said, I've learned how to do this, or I've seen this in my students, or I've, I've been able to do this, and that's that's amazing. So let's, let's continue that trajectory, but let's start to fold in those boundaries that so many of you are looking for. Now, this is my own personal experience. This is my own personal kind of philosophy on it, but I feel like it transfers well, and I hope you can take something out of this that's helpful to you. Uh, if you need help, if you need support, you know how to find us. You can leave a comment below. You can send me an email. You can go to the district website or to the blog and leave a comment. There's phone numbers you can call. Use your support network to make sure that you are taking care of yourself so that you can better help your students. Thanks for watching. We'll see you around.